All right, so this is about the blood. All right, now, of course, the first question is how important is the blood for a human being? Now, when we talk about the blood, okay, this is not normal blood, normal blood. Of course, we're gonna not talk about the blood of Jesus, but first, this question, how important is the blood for a human being? I believe uh, everybody knows that it is extremely important because uh, because all nutrition basically are in the blood. Okay, let's say you you eat something good and all those nut <coughs> nutrition for, uh, from the things that you ate <coughs> will be carried by the blood in your body. So that is very important. So the function of the blood is very, very important. Now we're talking about normal blood of human being. <clears throat> yeah, all the sustenance also in the blood. Now, but the Bible says, this is very important uh, verse that you need to remember. Leviticus 17, 11. Always, always, you know, we always quote this, uh, especially during the um, Holy Communion. Yeah, I believe that you've heard this. Leviticus 17, 11. It says, for the life of a creature, the life of the flesh, the life of the, any living creatures, the life of a creature is in the blood. Stop right there. Now, that's why we know that the blood is very, very important for every living creature. But it says the life of a creature is in the blood. But the opposite is always true. The death is also in the blood. So what I mean by that is... Now, like I said, that all nutrition that you ate will be carried by the blood. And the blood that will distribute all of those good things into all the parts of our body, right? But the death is also in the blood. That means, let's say, if somebody is, is poisoned, let's say, drink eh, some kind of poisonous, um, <coughs> poisonous uh, food or things like that. Snake venom. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Also, that poison will be carried by the blood and it's going to be deadly because all <laughs> parts of the body will be poisoned so now you you got a clear view the life of a creature is in the blood this is leviticus 17 11 and i have given it to you this is the lord saying to the the israelites to make atonement for yourself on the altar it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Now, the question, what is atonement? What is it? Pro I, I know, this is not a common, common, common English. Atonement. Do you know what atonement is? Yeah. Like to be forgiven. What is that? To be forgiven. To be forgiven. Yes, close. Uh, but yeah, if you open, let's say, if you Google the, this word atonement, you'll find many different uh, definitions. What is an atonement? It's like something that you do to make, to reconcile one person with another. That's an atonement. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Atonement. So, it says that the life is in the blood. Now, this statement is crucial. Don't forget this. The life is in the blood because we're gonna learn about the blood of Jesus. Yeah. That's why if you read your Bible, let's say in the book of. Uh, uh, Leviticus, yeah, mostly in the book of Levit Leviticus, you will find that even God Himself taught all the Israelites, if they they are about to eat something like an animal, don't eat the blood of that animal. Why? Because if you eat the blood, you also eat everything that is bad that is in the blood of that animal, like poisons or or sicknesses and diseases in that animal. Is also in the blood so that that is very strict there is very strict order in the Old Testament you will find that God himself told all the Israelites if you eat an animal don't eat that animal with the blood so if you kill an animal you have to hang it like upside down so that uh, the, uh, it will the, the, the blood will just pour out and then it, let's say it is it, it will dry up by itself and then then you can eat the animal but do not eat the animal with the blood okay now we know that the life of all creatures is in the blood now this is very important now another verse hebrew 
Hebrews 9, 22, without shedding of the blood, there is no remission. There is no remission of sins. Or, there is no forgiveness. This is New Testament. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. Now you know that I, I many times that I ask you a question like, okay, why did Jesus, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? And why did Jesus have to shed his blood? Uh, you know, that kind of questions. Yeah, Must be familiar for four of you. Now we know why. Because without the shedding of the blood, there won't be remission or forgiveness. Now I'm going to bring you to a story in the Bible. This one. To make you uh, understand the story, the importance of the blood. Yeah. Now this is about when Israel set free by the blood. Now, how many of you heard about this story? The ten plagues. How many of you know? Ten plagues, okay. What is the last one? What is that? The first Yes. The death of the firstborn. Firstborn. Now, this is this is about the death of the firstborn of any creatures, not only human beings. Animals and everything. Firstborn will be killed that night. That is the tenth plague. The tenth plague. And God delivered. Now I believe that you heard the story that all other nine plagues, all other nine plagues, yeah, they could not set the Israelites free. But the tenth one is different. Yeah. And that night, God told the children of Israel, all of the nation of Israel, to do this. What is that? To apply? Blood. Where? On the, uh, on the yes. doorpost. Yes, doorpost. Right? This is very important. Now, this is a picture of the uh, Passover. We talk about the, uh, the prophetic action, about 100 years from then, and Jesus would shed his blood and apply to save all humanity. But this time, God said to all the children of Israel, this is what God said. Exodus 12, 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And now look at this one. This is very important. And when I see the blood, this is what God said. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Because that night, all the firstborn of Egyptians, humans, men, women, animals, all the firstborn will be killed. And God says, when I see the blood, it's a sign. It's a sign. That means what? God didn't say, when I see your goodness. God didn't say, when I see your righteousness. When I see your obedience. No. Only the blood. There is a sign. So that's why God told you all the Israelites to do this. It's a sign. A doorpost. Now this is a very powerful. Because when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That means the dead could not touch them. If there is a blood, it's only the blood of animal in front of the door, doorpost and lintel. Yeah? But it's a sign. The door, the host, the whole household marked by the blood. Right? Now think about this. Let's say God was about to smite the land of Egypt. Right? With death. Now think about this. That night, as you know from the story, that all the firstborn will be killed. Now let's say, there's an Egyptian, there's an Egyptian boy, and he, let's say, is a firstborn. But, coincidentally, that night, he was inside that house, the house of one of the Israelites. Even, let's say, he's an Egyptian, and he's a firstborn. But he is in that house. He'll be safe. 
even though he's an Egyptian. You got that? Why? Because the sign, the mark, where I see the blood. Now, now you can think that the power of the blood. And again, it's just the blood of an animal. The blood of an animal. Lamb. Now, you can read the whole story because we don't have time to read the whole story from Exodus 12. This is just amazing. Yeah, when God introduced the Passover, the Passover, that's why I forget from the book. I will pass over you. That means there will be no death in your house because I see the blood. But the opposite is also true. Even though there is an Israelite and he's a firstborn and he is outside the house at that night, he would be killed because he is outside the border of the blood. Right? You got that? Okay. Now, this is Exodus 12, 13. Now, this is so powerful. The blood is so powerful. Now, we're going to learn in the New Testament. Right. But God himself applied the blood. The question is where and when. It was God, God's own idea to apply the blood, the blood as a sign, to mark his people with the blood. Now, let's take a look at this story. Genesis 3, 7. Now, you know this story. The first man, Adam and Eve. Yeah, Adam and Eve. They fell into sin. And then what happened after that? This one. After the fall of man, after they fell into sin, they were hiding, remember that? And then God asked them, Adam, where are you? I'm hiding. Yeah? He was hiding because I was afraid because of the sin. Look, then the eyes of both, that means Adam and Eve, the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they soon fit leaves together and made themselves covering from big leaves. The question, did it work? No. Why? Because there is no blood in the leaves. Right? Now think about this. First man fell into sin. To cover the sin, he takes the blood to cover the sin. And that man tried to help himself by covering himself with leaves. But it didn't work because there is no blood in leaves. Alright? Then what happened? This is what God did for Adam and Eve. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Now watch this. Like I said, they tried to help themselves, to cover themselves with thick leaves, but it didn't work. Then, this is what God did. God, okay. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. That means God had to kill the animal. Now, can you imagine this? God had to kill an animal, or maybe two, and took the skin of that animal, and it's still wet with the blood, and clothed Adam and Eve. You got that? So it's not merely because of the skin, but because it is wet with the blood. That's the idea. Okay? Okay? You got the idea? That is Genesis 3. But this is not the first time the shedding of the blood recorded in the Bible. Now we're going to learn even further. Right? Okay. From two examples. When the children of Israel were uh, enslaved in Egypt, how God delivered them by the blood. And God smote the land of Egypt by killing all the firstborn. Uh, he told the Israelites, do this. Mark your door with the blood. Right? And when I see the blood, remember that. When I see the blood, 
right? And here, in Genesis, another example. Okay, now, stop right here. Did you get the idea, the importance of the blood, all right? Okay? Because I have to make sure that you know, you know the story. You know why God used the blood. Right, then we continue. Question. Why did they use the blood of an animal? What about the blood of man? Can they use their own blood? Why they use only the blood of animal? Hmm? What about the blood of man? Answer. Can they use the blood of a man to no. cover? No. Why? Because we still sin. Because? Because we, have, because we sin. Because we sin. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer. Now here's why. Now after the first man fell into sin, I remember that. Now, the whole humanity, basically all humanity, fell into sin. Because all of human beings were still in Adam's loin. You know what I mean? So, now if you read the Bible in Romans 5, you will understand that every one of us were actually born into Adam, not into Christ. That means we carry the DNA of sin, of sin of the first man, Adam. So that's why after the fall of man, even the blood of man is already contaminated or stained with sin. You got that? That's why to cover the sin, we cannot use blood that is already contaminated with sin. Right? You get this? You know? All right? This is the idea. So, what about the blood of man? No, we cannot use the blood of man because it's already stained with sin. That's a good answer. Now, Revelation 13, 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Now, when, when you read this, probably you will ask, okay, whoa, what is this all about? Now, the question is, okay, why did they use the blood of an animal? Because they cannot use the blood of a man. Okay, but why can't they use the blood of animal, it's only animal, it's not even a human, it's not even the blood of the Lord. This is the answer, because Jesus has been crucified before the foundation of the world. Now, this is, this is deep now. Hopefully you, you can understand this. Though. I pray the Holy Spirit that will open it to you. Because in the eyes of God the Father, Jesus has been crucified before the foundation of this world. So when they apply the blood of any kind of animal, what God the Father sees is the blood of His Son covering humanity. Let me try again. Look, in the eyes of God the Father, Jesus has been crucified before the foundation of the world, before everything started. So when they apply the, applied the blood of an animal, in the eyes of God the Father, when God looked down, what God sees is actually not the blood of animal, but the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Right? It's a prophetic action, something that they did, but the real one, the real substance is yet to come. Right? I know it's deep. Okay? Do you know that? Do you understand that? It's okay. <laughs> okay, carry on. Okay, why did Jesus have to shed his blood when he died? Now you know the answer, all right? Now, there's a word defined transmission. Okay, let me explain this. Now, let's say, let's say there's a man here, and he's got, uh, let's say, he's got, he's got any, any sickness, certain sickness, and he needs transfusion, blood transfusion. Okay, certain sickness requires blood transfusion the problem is let's say okay let me let me use example okay let's say robert let's see he's got any some some kind of sickness okay this is just an example no you you're not sick <laughs> you're not sick but let's say he needs 
transfusion because he's got something, a sickness. But what he needs is actually a clean blood. Okay, let's say Christian, okay, I will volunteer myself. I will give my blood for Robert. But the thing is this, if Christian also has the same sickness as Robert, Christian cannot give his blood to Robert. Why? Because they both have, you know, have same sickness. This is just an illustration, you got the idea? Okay, okay. Now the whole humanity got problem. Why? Because of the fell, or the, uh, the, when, when the first man fell into sin, the whole humanity actually got problem. None of them is a pure blood. So that means the whole humanity required a pure blood, which is so pure, it's not stained with any kind of sins, sicknesses and diseases. That's why Jesus had died on the cross, shed his blood. That blood is actually why I said that it's divine transfusion. Okay, now I can give my blood. This is what Jesus did. It's because this blood, Jesus' blood, is pure, not stained, not contaminated with sins. Right? That's the idea. Okay, I know this is deep. Okay, next. What is the difference between the blood of animal in the Old Testament and the blood of Jesus in the New Testament? Now, this is interesting. Now, the answer is temporary versus eternal. I'm going to show you a short video. But first, I'm going to explain this. Now, in the Old Testament, uh, during, the, uh, during the day of Moses, let's say somebody is sinned. I mean, let's say somebody sin and then he, he can't just uh, pray to the Lord, Lord, please forgive me. No. Now we can do that now. Okay. But they couldn't do that. If they sin, they need to bring an offering. That's what they call sin offering. A lamb. Yeah, you can read this from the Bible. They need to, the sinful person, yeah, he had to bring a lamb. As for as a, as a sinful offering, sin offering, sin offering, okay, and then the priest will examine the lamb, not examine that person. Examine the lamb, and then when okay, this is good, there's no blemish whatsoever, and then the priest would kill the lamb, and then that man, the sinful person, could go out as a free man. That's what happened. I'm going to show you a video, very short video. I got this from New Creation Church, uh, Joseph Prince Church. It's very short, uh, but it's it's a good one. So hopefully, okay, okay. This is what happened in the Old Testament. Yeah. Okay, one more time. This guy is the sinner. That one is a, he's the priest. Like I said, that the sinner had to bring a lamb as a sin offering. Okay, one more time. He's a sinner. This is his lamb. He was the one that sinned, not the lamb. But the priest will examine the lamb, not that person. Looking for blemishes? Now look at this, look at this. Now he would lay his hand on that lamb as a symbolic one. All his sin 
will be transferred into this innocent lamb and all the righteousness of this lamb will be transferred into his body that's what happened that's why it's divine exchange look at it you have to see Then the priest had to kill the lamb. Oh, oh no. Don't worry about it, it's a cartoon. <coughs> they cooked it? Then, no, yes. <laughs> this guy, now, he can walk out as a free man. <coughs> but, but, but. Only for a moment, but only for a moment. That means what? That means, let's say, he did that now, and then he walked away as a free man, and then let's say next week, next week, he did another sin. He had to do it again, and again, and again, and again. That means it's just temporary. All right? So. What is the difference between the blood of animal in the Old Testament and the blood of Jesus in the New Testament? Jesus shed his blood once, only once. And it stands efficacious up until today. That's the difference. The blood of a lamb, an animal, and the blood of the lamb of God. That's the difference. Temporary versus eternal. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Next question. When was the shedding of the blood mentioned for the first time in the Bible? Now I have to give you this information because this is very important. <coughs> like I said that uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 3, now we just saw uh, the story when God clothed Adam and Eve after the first, uh, the first man fell into sin with the tunic made of skin. That means God had to kill the animal and then still wet with blood and then God covered them. But that's not the first time. This is the first time. Genesis 2. This is deep. Hopefully you can understand it. Look. Now do you remember? God created Adam and Eve, but the first man God created was Adam, not Eve. Now do you remember how God created Eve? Genesis 2, 22 and 23. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep fall oh, the deep sleep to fall on Adam. Now, this is prophetic. Deep sleep, that means it's a picture of death. Later on, another Adam had to die just to bear a quote unquote church or a woman. Now, look. And he slept. And he slept. And he, God, took one of his ribs and closed up. The flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from that man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. God had to open Adam's side to take one rib. Open means what? Bloodshed. That's the first time. Although the Bible did mention that, okay, God had to uh, operate like a thick knife and it's like surgery. No, no. But this is a picture. Now, every time you read your Bible and you see the word a woman, it will always, always, it will always typify either Israel or the church. Church of the Lord and Israel, the nation of Israel, will always be pictured as a woman in the Bible. That's very important. So, to born, to, to give birth to the first female, the first woman, God had to open Adam's side, took that rib. That is the first time in the Bible, shedding of the blood mentioned. Okay. Now, oh, why am I telling you this? You'll understand later. Just hang on. All right. Look, the life in the blood can speak. Now, the 
how powerful the blood is. Even the blood can speak. Now look at this. Now first, Genesis 4.10. Now do you know the first murder in the Bible? What is that? <coughs> yes. Cain and Abel. Cain, his brother, killed, killed his brother, Abel. Cain killed his brother, Abel. But what happened next? Look. And he said, what have you done? This is the Lord God. They are talking to Cain. What have you done, Cain? The voice of your brother's blood cries out. No, hang on, wait a minute. Abel had already died. And he's dead. But the blood, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Cries out for what? Vengeance. Vengeance. That blood was to take revenge. That blood. Now, uh, have you seen, uh, like the TV series, what is it called? Uh, CSI? CSI? Investigation? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, in a crime scene, somebody was just murdered, and then they will trace the blood stain using some kind of uh, probably uh, ultra ultraviolet or something, mm -hmm. just to trace the blood stain. Because the blood can tell them lots of things. Now, even this one, this is in the spirit. The blood, even of a dead man, cries out to the Lord, in this case, Abel, because he was murdered by his own brother, cried out for vengeance. But, look at this. Hebrews 12, 24. What happened? To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that is the blood of Jesus Christ, that speaks better, speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So the blood of Jesus also, the blood of Jesus also speaks out, but speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Remember, the blood of Abel cried out for vengeance, but the blood of Jesus, do you know what the blood of Jesus cried out for? Mercy. Mercy. That's it. Mercy. Isn't that amazing? That's why Jesus, when Jesus died, he had to share his blood for mercy, mercy, mercy. Actually, I don't have to give this information to you. Do you know that on the way to Calvary, Jesus shed his blood on seven different spots, seven times. In the time of Moses, high priest, High priest will carry the blood, the blood of an animal, entering the holy place and into the most holy place in the tabernacle of Moses. Do you know the tabernacle of Moses? That's okay. Carrying blood of animal, the blood of animal. And that high priest in front of the Ark of Covenant, he had to sprinkle seven times the Ark. It's a prophetic action. And then later, hundreds of years from there, Jesus had to fulfill that prophetic action. That's why Jesus shed his blood seven times. Now, I don't want to go into detail, but all of this, each, every one of them, each is really meaningful. Now, everybody knows this, of course, uh, like number four, five, six. Number three, four, five, six, everybody knows that. When they crowned him with, you know, thorn. Mm -hmm. It's bleeding, right? Okay, he, Jesus shed his blood. Everybody knows it. And when they lash his back, torn apart. Everybody knows that. When they nailed his hands, everybody knows that. Nailed his feet. But remember, number seven, look at this, number seven. When they pierced his side, the only, look at number seven, they did this when Jesus already died. Jesus already died on the cross. Then after he died on the cross, one of the soldiers took the, uh, his spear and pierced his side. This one, number seven, done after he died. Why? Now remember, the first mention in the Bible, like I said, when the blood shed, when Adam 
fell into deep sleep. Deep sleep always talk about death. God grabbed his right. And God opened his side, Adam's side, so that he can create a woman. Woman always, woman is always a picture of what? Either Israel or the church. Now, to give birth to the church, Jesus had to do the same thing on the cross. When he was, quote unquote, asleep. He was asleep. That means what? After his death. That's why number seven, they did it after Jesus died on the cross. Number one to six, they did it when Jesus was alive, but not number seven. As a fulfillment of the prophet, prophetic mentioned in Genesis, to give birth to his church, woman. Okay? Now, every single one of them has a deep meaning. For instance, why Jesus had to shed his blood from his hands to secure your work, to secure your work, the work of your hands. Why did Jesus have to, have to shed, shed his blood from his feet to secure your walk, your walk? Why did he crown him with thorns to secure with your mind? Mind. And this, let's his back. First Peter two twenty four. By his stripes, stripes on his back, you were healed to heal your physical body. This one. Okay, I can go deeper in. And deeper but no I'm not gonna do this now but at least this is the information that you need to know yeah and number one number one I believe you know that yeah. first time Jesus shed his blood number one he swept blood in that garden the first blood shed in the Bible recorded also in the garden of Eden and there's another garden for thousand years later. Another Adam. And he shed his blood. It's in that garden. You know the story? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a human being, he was under pressure. Jesus himself, he was under pressure. So that he drops his sweat. His blood. Now, of course, medically, scientifically, uh, you can you can know why 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 it happened scientifically, or maybe you can you can just Google it, search why it's it's possible under great stress, under very very deep, great and overburden or like great pressure that um, what do you call that um, the artery artery or vein, yeah. You can just yeah instantly just uh just breaks. That's why you can spread blood. This is what happened. Right? Now there's a question from Gerald last week. Yeah, I was told by uh, Pastor Henry. Why did Jesus cry out on the cross? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right? Why did Jesus cry out? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, if you notice, when you read your Bible, even from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four Gospels, <coughs> Jesus never, never once, now watch this, Jesus never once, not even once, called his God, called God as God, never. He always, always called God as God. Father, only once when he was on the cross, when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, it's a real forsaking, folks. It's a real forsaking. But the question is, why? Here's the answer. Because God, the Father, is so holy that God, the Father, cannot look at sins. 
And on that cross, Jesus Christ, not only he was carrying the sins of all this earth, but he was made sin. Sin, noun, not verb. Let me try again. On that cross, yeah, Jesus was carrying the sins of all this earth. But not only that, but he was made sin. Now we become the righteousness of God in Christ because God had become sins. So the judgment, like I said, the judgment must be executed upon sins. So Jesus became sins. Now, now he did no sin. The Bible says he knew no sin. He did no sin. In him is no sin. But he became sin. Now, so that the judgment can be executed upon sin. And at that very moment, since God the Father is so holy, God the Father cannot see any sins. That's why at that very moment, exact moment, God the Father had to turn His face from His Son. That's why the Son cried out, My God, my God. He didn't say, My Father. No, He said, My God, my God. <laughs> why? So that now we can call God as Father. So everything that Jesus did on the cross is an exchange, divine exchange. That's the only place you can find that Jesus ever called God as God instead of Father. And that is the real forsaking. Okay, it's a separation. Probably it's like the scariest moment in Jesus. The, from, uh, of all the whole process of Calvary, probably that is the scariest moment when... The father's eyes turned away from the son. But he was carrying the sins of the world. So now we can call God as father. Okay, you get that? Okay. Now I'm going to close with a video. Okay. Now Jesus said, it's, it is finished. Now I believe I have shared this before. Do you still remember? What's been finished? What is that? He said, it is finished. <coughs> Anyone still remember? Removing the curse. My time. Yes. The process of carrying all so sins, disease, sickness, and all bad things, any kind of bad things that you can ever imagine. That process is finished. But another process is just about to begin. That is what Jesus did. Alright? So, yeah, we don't have much time. So, um, yeah, hopefully next time I can share. Uh, there's more, of course. Like, how can we plead the blood? How can the blood now, at this moment in this life, how can the blood cover you from demonic activities, from the devil, from demons? Why? what the blood can do for you now okay that's not a, that's not the topic of course but the basic now we've covered the basic why the blood why is it important okay the difference between the blood of animal and the blood of jesus remember yeah the sacrifice temporary versus <coughs> eternal all right and why they can use even only the blood of animal now you know why they couldn't use the blood of a human being. Now you know. Alright? Okay?